Four-wheel drive and nearly 270 brake horsepower should be enough to put Volkswagen's Golf R firmly in the realms of the super hatch. It's the Golf for buyers who want reserve, but find the excellent GTI offers a little too much of it. With sharpened steering, firmer suspension and upgraded brakes, this car offers a real step up the performance ladder. Not so long ago, the 208 brake horsepower you get in a Volkswagen Golf GTI would have been seen as an awful lot of power for a shopping rocket. But times have changed. Today, that kind of output gets you past the bouncers and into the exclusive hot hatch party. But as for sitting at the top table, well, forget it. Even relatively affordable choices like Seat's Leon Cupra R or the Renault Sport Megane offer 250 brake horsepower. Uh, Audi's S3 offers 265 bhp and Ford's Focus RS has over 300 braked horses. Go for a Subaru Impreza STI or a Mitsubishi Evo 10 and you can have even more. As the originator, the godfather of fast family hatches, you might think that fast golfs ought to be better represented in this sector. Volkswagen agreed and the result is this car, the Golf R. As you might already be aware, the Wolfsburg engineers have attempted to better their iconic GTI model before and never quite succeeded. Adding more weight is never a good way to try and improve a hot hatch, even if it does bring more power. And various attempts to shoehorn a heavy V6 under the bonnet, first with the uh, Golf VR6 of 1992, then earlier this century with a couple of Golf R32 incarnations, really, well, never quite worked. So this time, the development team did what they should have done in the first place. Hone the original, rather than try and recreate it. So it is that the R has 2-litre, 4-cylinder turbocharged power, just like a GTI. But offering 60 brake horsepower more of it, together with 4-motion four 4-wheel four drive to get said power onto bitumen, makes all the difference. The R is the GTI let off the leash. Let's get one thing quite clear right away. Other uber-fast hot hatches will feel more exciting than this one on a quick blast up and down your favourite country road. So if that's the basis on which you're going to judge the Golf R, then don't bother. The reality, of course, is that we don't live our driving lives on a quick test drive any more than we live them blasting up and down deserted Tuscan hillsides. We live them in urban snarl-ups, motorway madness and icy mornings, hoping, if we're petrol heads, for that one glimmer of a chance to remind ourselves just why we loved driving so much when we started all those years ago. Which is where the Golf R comes into its own. This car will live with the traffic jams, it'll deal with the commute and it'll stop you sliding into the bushes during a cold snap. But when the road opens up and there's no one on it but you, it'll change down, snarl its exhaust and hurl you towards the horizon, demolishing any bend that you care to throw at it along the way. It's magic. With 267 braked horses on tap, uh, the rest of 60 sprint is demolished in 5.7 seconds. That's 1.2 seconds quicker than a Golf GTI and quicker even than a two-wheel drive Ford Focus RS can manage with 34 brake horsepower more. If you uh, opt for the uh, twin-clutch DSG semi-automatic transmission, the sprint time is lowered to just 5.5 seconds, the quicker time courtesy of the, the twin-clutch unit's ultra-quick changes. This being a seriously powerful car, top speed has to be limited to 155 miles an hour, and the job of deploying all that performance falls to the four-wheel drive setup that you don't get in this model's otherwise mechanically identical cousin, the Sirocco R. Now that's something you'll miss in Volkswagen's pretty coupe, for the four-motion setup gives this Golf an enthusiasm for corners that's missing in the standard GTI Golf model. Now the reasons why are down to the four motion system's ability to precisely distribute the power exactly where it's needed so that the car goes in the direction that you're pointing at with the steering wheel. For example, four motion can decide if it feels that the front wheels are scrabbling for grip to channel all 350 newton meters of torque towards the rear. 
There's more to it than that, of course. This Golf features revised anti-roll bars, specially tuned electromechanical power steering, and slightly stiffer suspension that drops the car's ride height by around 25 millimeters. Now this last name feature makes it pretty important in my view to specify the optional ACC adaptive chassis control adjustable damping system if you're not to have to put up with a slightly over firm ride on those occasions when you just don't want it. It's also virtually essential if you're to uh, cope with the rather jiggly demeanor that comes with the optional 19 inch alloy wheels. You probably won't have seen a Golf R on the road, and even if you had, it's quite possible that you won't have registered its existence. So, max power devotees can switch off right now. Good, now they're gone, I can tell you about this car's more subtle visual charms. The quickest Golf ever built features a deeper front bumper with enlarged air intakes that sits just below uh, a black front grille flanked by xenon headlamps. Uh, that in turn sit just above LED daytime running lights. Moving past the black door mirrors and the side sill extensions to the back, there's a revised rear bumper that sits just below restyled rear light clusters and incorporates twin centrally mounted exhaust pipes and a gloss black diffuser. The 25mm lower ride height gives a meaner stance, underlined by tinted rear windows and unique 18-inch alloy wheels, peeping out between the spokes of which are the calipers and enlarged discs of an upgraded braking system. There's more of the same subtle potency inside. The R badge that crops up on the grille is mirrored on a set of aluminium kick plates, but the cabin is dominated by the Alcantara grey and black cloth trim sports seats. There's more gloss black detailing with revised instruments that feature needles that illuminate in blue behind this lovely leather covered steering wheel. It's all quite beautifully thought out and put together and these sport seats offer great support. Unfortunately, their thickness does impinge a bit on back seat knee room in this three door model, but there is a five door option. And either way, you get more rear passenger space than you would have done buying Volkswagen Sirocco Coupe, for example. There's plenty of stowage areas dotted about, and you've got this useful ski hatch for poking longer items through from the boot. Talking of the boot, there's 350 litres of luggage space with all these seats in position, and you can increase that to 1,305 litres by pushing forward the 60-40 split folding rear bench. Though because the seat backs simply flop onto the seat bases, there isn't a completely flat loading floor in this layout. If you're expecting to pay less than £30,000 for a Golf R, then you're not being very realistic. That's not only uh, £6,000 more than a Golf GTI, it's also nearly £2,000 more than Audi's mechanically almost identical uh, S3, previously one of the priciest hot hatches money could buy. Uh, you're also looking at paying around £3,500 more than you would for uh, Pokia, though not necessarily fast arrivals like uh, Ford's Focus RS or Subaru's Impreza STI. And of course the savings are even greater if you opt to all but match this Golf R's output by going for uh, a car like say Renault Sports Megane 250 or Seat's Leon Cupra R. Still though, none of these rivals can match the Golf's quality and its high residuals and few of them have four wheel drive. Once you have decided on a Golf R, you might think that choosing your car would be quite straightforward. But no, a bit more pencil chewing is necessary if you're to get your purchase absolutely right. There's the decision over three and five doors, for example, and the choice between six speed manual or semi-automatic twin clutch DSG transmission with its steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. Next, if you're to avoid what for many will be a slightly over firm ride, there's a box to be ticked for the ACC adaptive chassis control system that quite ludicrously on a car this expensive isn't included within the standard asking price in the way that it is in a bog standard Volkswagen Sirocco. And that's before you get into 18 or 19 inch alloy wheels, sports seats and the like. 
at least safety wise there's a decent tally of kit including uh, an ESP uh, electronic stability control system that can be disabled in two stages uh, allowing the driver greater freedom to approach the limits of grip. Technophobes may be interested to know that paying £6,000 more for a, a Golf R over a Golf GTI actually nets you an older engine. Uh, this model has uh, the older 2.0-litre turbo unit from the Mark V GTI rather than the newer 2.0-litre TSI turbo that's used in the GTI Mark VI. According to Wolfsburg, the more elderly power plant was easier to tune. Anyway, maybe that goes some way towards explaining why uh, this CO2 emissions figure for this car, um, so impressive in the Golf GTI at 170 grams per kilometre, isn't quite as eye-catching at 199 grams per kilometre. Still, that's a big improvement on the smoky 257 grams per kilometre that the old Golf R32 managed, so perhaps we shouldn't complain. Combined fuel economy is 33 miles to the gallon. Uh, insurance may be pricey, but residual values should be strong. The Golf R sees Volkswagen baring its teeth with more purpose, but signs of the Mark's trademark reserve still remain. For potential buyers, that'll be part of the appeal of what is a formidable package, with the power and technology to give the fastest hatchbacks in the world a run for their money. Others are more eye-catching both at the wheel and down the high street, but few other practical family cars can pack a silken punch quite like this one.